And it would seem to me, I know this is not what we're talking about with medicinal, but the decriminalisation of marijuana would keep people out of prison who I'm just going back to my anecdotal research, guards are saying shouldn't be here. Yeah. Would also therefore say the taxpayers, whatever it is, $120,000 a year to keep them there. There just seems to be. And as they're found out in places like Colorado and California, they could then tax it or figure out a way to do it and actually make the government and country money as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And I think the... The, the the biggest opportunity here is, you know, and you brought it up really nicely, but the thing that nobody's really discussing, at least not publicly, is that any law reform in the, in the drug space, specifically the cannabis space, not just the Misuse of Drugs Act, Psychoactive Substances Act is also up for review this year, and then in 2020 we're going to have this referendum. It is almost definitely going to impact positively on Māori, who are overrepresented in our jail cells. You know, they only make up 15% of the population, but over 50% inside. It's worse for women like me, 63%. You know, I've actually got the stats right here because I was looking at the drugs, and it's 50, the, the, based in September 2018, the Department of Corrections stats, 51% Māori, and on the um, it's 12.1%, uh, 12.6% for drugs and that graph that I'm just showing you now is... Let's say that again, 12.6? 12.6 for drug offences, and this graph shows the... Um, there's some, some of them it says that um, there's a, a caveat saying that their most serious offence is the one listed here, so the drugs 12.6 is when drugs is the most serious thing they did. So one in eight people inside are there for drugs, 12%. You can, we can assume that half of those are Māori because the stats say it's half. Yeah, yeah. at yeah. least half. 51%. And then if we're looking about fe- if we're looking at female population, 63% is like th- they're Māori women. So, I mean, it's just the over-representation there is it's really scary. Um, and what those figures are not showing is the recidivism. So once you go to jail once, mm-hmm. you're going to go back again. Well, even So you'll I be can't... back again, like I think it's over 50% are back within three years and then after five to ten years it's 80%. Um, for Māori, speaking specifically to Māori. So it's setting them up for this really terrible life cycle. Um, and, you know, I think that this the, the law reform, the regs that are going to be written this year, it's, it's a huge opportunity for our country as a whole to heal this hurt because the fact that we know these stats is not good enough. There seems to also be a disconnect for me um, because we don't know just know these stats, but so do the... So does the government, so do the yeah. MPs. I don't know who it is. Maybe you could try and Google this and find out who it is, Jace. I can't remember. But there was a bit of shock and awe recently in the last few years when a national MP, it might have even been Bill English, admitted that um, prisons were a university for crime. And that's the kind of thing that the left normally says. And it was definitely a national MP under a national then government okay. that, that finally acknowledged it publicly. So it's like, well, hang on. If we all know this... Yeah. And the left, for want of a, a better word, knows this. And now fairly influential parts of the right are saying this. Why aren't we addressing this? Yeah. Well, I think that there, there, has, been, there has been some things coming out recently. Um, there have been some really good um, longitudinal studies um, about, about this, trying to address the systemic racism um, and bias within the judicial system. And it's it's not just any one singular point. Um, so it's not, uh, and this is, this is, I'm relating this back to statements released by the Department of Corrections yep. um, who, uh, who have looked at this, the numbers, looked at the statistics, and they have um, inferred some, 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 like why these outcomes are the way they are. Um, and they point to um, the racism and bias throughout all these various st- steps within the judicial system. So it's not just the police, it's not just stop and search, it's also arrest, it's also that arrest leading to conviction, leading to imprisonment, leading to recidivism. So it's, you know, it's it's also the it's the judges, it's the juries, it's it's actually it's incumbent upon all of us throughout society. It's it is the system, but it's it's us as well because we know this, but we're not doing so anything do do? about so it. So what do we do? What, right how do we MP. address it? Right to your MPs. What do we say to our MPs? Put the pressure on the MPs to make the regs this year as inclusive as possible. We need to recognise the fact that if people are so if you, so, you take a Māori and a Pakia, the the what the statistics show is that um, that 
Pakia are much more likely to be sent off with a warning and a slap on the wrist mm-hmm. if for it's the a same drug charge for the same crime, yes, same. drug, drug related, part. especially cannabis charges. Yeah. And Māori are four times more likely to be arrested, convicted, imprisoned, and it's that that whole trajectory. So we need to be reaching out to our members of parliament who will be asked to make a, a lot of decisions this year, and really make an implored plea to them to make the regulations as inclusive as possible. We don't want to write out access to anybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody who thinks that they have a medicinal need for it should be able to access it, whether it's for mental illness, chronic pain, whatever your condition, it should not be as difficult as it was for me to get it. It should not be prohibited to those who can and cannot afford it as it currently stands because right now there's a huge line in the sand between the haves and the Mm have-nots. There are lots of people that would love to access medicinal marijuana but it's not publicly funded. Mm -hmm. So there are not a lot of people who can afford a a, a medical bill on top of whatever else their condition is costing them Mm -hmm. in terms of like time off work, support care, care support, you know, all the other things that come with any sort of serious illness, maybe they're on a sickness benefit, you definitely cannot afford mm. medicinal marijuana so those, if you're on a sickness benefit. So those 200 people that had uh, were able to do it when you went and spoke to the select yeah. committee, they're all basically paying for, one of the better word, market rates for their yes. medicinal marijuana. Yeah, so if you want medicinal marijuana, you you, you pay the price. Mm-hmm. And the price right now in New Zealand is ridiculously overstated. I think it's something like 56, uh, 56 cents per mig. That's the going rate. Um so what I think. Hmm. So what is there? What is the? What does that mean? Oh, so like um, that, that pea that, for, you, for, that, pea for that you put inside um, his his cheek. Yeah, Ed's cheek. What would so that cost? Edwards, oh, so, so Edwards. Oh, so so Edwards. Well, a global cost for Edward is thousands of dollars. Um, Per. In, a, in a month, it, and it fluctuates because obviously, if he's unwell, he consumes more. Right. So his dose. Um, relates to his overall immunity. And I presume the same would probably be for the majority of medicinal marijuana users. Like I assume if your cancer is really bad, Mm. you need more. Mm. And when you're in remission, you need less and likely the same for a pain condition. So several hundred a week? um, Thousands a month? Yeah. A a bad week can be a $1,000. And where does that come from? My pocket. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's not funded. There's no there's no funding. Everything for Edward uh, comes out of my pocket, and as a solo working mum, it's <laughs> <laughs> it seems it seems that what governments do, what governments should do. Oh wait, sorry, I do get the disability um, benefit, which gives me ninety dollars every fortnight. That goes a long okay. way to offsetting. So you've gone down Edward's from thousands a month to thousands a month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.